This is a, probably one of the more difficult equations to solve, and we're going to use it using properties of logarithms. Um, here we have 5 raised to the 2x minus 1 is equal to 7 raised to the x plus 2. And the difficulty with this one is that the bases cannot be written um, in common base uh, terminology. Like before we had 9 and 27, and 9 could be written as 3 squared and 27 could be written as 3 cubed. That way forcing the bases to be the same. So this one we're going to have to treat a little bit differently. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to log or natural log both sides. I like natural log, it's just a habit of mine. So we're going to natural log both sides of this equation and see what happens. So let's see, and the inside over here is 5 raised to the 2x minus 1. And over here we're going to have 7 raised to the x plus 2. And by logging both sides, we're not changing the equation at all because we're balancing it all out. Whatever you do to the left, do the same thing to the right. And why we do this is because we can use that property that says we can bring exponents down in front of the logarithm. So we're going to just dump these exponents out front. Uh, just make sure you leave them in parentheses because they are quantities. So we have 2x minus 1, it'll be times ln of 5. And over here we're going to get uh, the quantity x plus 2 times ln of 7. And if you want, you can leave parentheses around the 5 and the 7 so you, uh, you remember that those are functions attached to those numbers. Um, to solve for x, we need to get rid of these parentheses, so we're going to distribute the ln of 5 on the left and the ln of 7 on the right, and we're going to end up with an ugly expression, which is 2 times ln of 5 times x, that would be from here, ln of 5 times 2x, and then minus ln of 5, that ln of 5 times that negative 1, is equal to, um, I'm going to write it kind of backwards, x times ln of 7, that way I don't get confused and think it's ln of 7x, and then uh, that would be from this one, and then we're going to get 2 times ln of 7, plus 2 times ln of 7. Now to solve an equation where variables are all over the place, we need to get the variables on the same side of the equation. So I'm going to take the term with the x on this side and move it that way. And anything that doesn't have an x on this side, and I'm going to move it that way. In this case, the minus ln of 5. So when I rewrite this expression, I'm going to have 2 ln of 5 times x uh, minus x ln of 7 is equal to uh, 2 ln of 7 plus ln of 5. And now that we have x's on the same side of the equation, you factor it out. And we'll have left over 2 ln of 5 minus ln of 7 is equal to the other side. 2 ln of 7 plus ln of 5. Now, you could use condensation of these logarithms to make the expressions nicer, especially for calculators. Uh, but you don't have to. The book leaves it this way and they take this huge expression over here and divide it by this ugly expression over there. I think contraction makes it a little bit better. For instance, this 2 hits that 5, it makes it 25. The subtraction makes it a division. So this whole thing becomes ln of 25 divided by 7. Over here you're going to get ln of 49, because that 2 would come up here and square the 7, uh, times 5, because they're being added together. So, uh, if you don't do that, you're going to have to use a lot of parentheses to make sure your calculator gets the right answer. So the top would have to go in parentheses, and the bottom would also have to go in parentheses. And that'll give you the same answer as if you condensed it. That's it. There's your answer. Not very pretty.